Why do things happen when you're in a hurry? I'm getting ready for Maker Faire and the toilet seat hinge breaks. I got no time to go to the store, so Tinkercad to the rescue. I designed a new hinge, printed it, installed it, and I'm ready to go. I'll show you how I did it on this week's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. The bracket that broke was actually for the lid. It just broke right at the pivot. So I got online and tried to find one. Maybe I could pick one up at Home Depot. I did find one online at Amazon.com that would fit, but they didn't have this at Home Depot, and I really didn't even have time to route to the store. I figured I could print it while I packed and everything else. So the first thing I did is I just scrubbed the heck out of this. If I'm going to take things apart, I don't want any hidden surprises. So I scrubbed it down, and then I removed the good one. Actually, I removed them both, but I removed the good one, and then I took a bunch of measurements. I measured the inside diameter. I measured the outside diameter. I measured the length, the width, the spacing of the holes, and just wrote all this down and then took that over to Tinkercad. I opened Tinkercad at tinkercad.com, opened my account, and the first thing I did was brought in the ruler tool so I could get all the dimensions that I wanted. And I started with just the rounded part, which was 17.5 millimeters in diameter. And then I knew the whole size needed to be 12 millimeters. Actually, it was like 11.5, but I was accounting for the extra. I wanted it to be loose. So I did a 12 millimeter hole, put that in the center of the cylinder, brought it up a little bit so it'd have an end cap, grouped that together. And now I had really the pivot that this whole thing would work from. And I knew it was four millimeters off from the base. So I lifted it four millimeters. Then I brought in a block and sized this according to the dimensions that I had. And basically it's the same width as that barrel. And then I just line these up on the end point. So the end of the barrel lines up at the end of the square piece. And then I just grouped those guys together. And really I had the basis of my pivot. But then I wanted to make it look a little better. So I brought in this wedge piece moved it to roughly the center, made it into a hole, and you can see I'm going to chop off this corner. And so now I had a pivot very similar to what I was replacing. So the only thing left really, I could have rounded the edges here, but I was in a hurry. So the only thing I needed was the holes for the screws. So I knew they needed to be four millimeters in diameter. They were three and a half, I think, on the, on the part. So four millimeters in diameter, and then I needed to recess the head into the plastic. So I brought in a cone, made that into a hole, and then centered these two guys. And once I had them centered in the X and Y, this was going to form the hole that I needed. So I just grabbed these two and I knew the exact location I wanted, so I changed to midpoint on the ruler. And it needed to be 7.7 uh, .7 millimeters from the end, so the center of the hole was from the end. That's why I chose midpoint and when I did this somehow the ruler disappeared it says dismiss ruler but <laughs> it's not showing up I, I'm not sure what happened here this is like a glitch so I just went and got the ruler brought it in again and then everything showed up so the second hole was the same thing I knew it I needed to be offset from the other one the proper dimensions put that in place and then I realized I hadn't centered them in the sideways direction so I grabbed everything centered them and now it was ready to just group together and this should form the whole bracket and there you have it. Now I needed a matching one on the other side so the easiest way to do that is just do a duplicate and then mirror it and then slide it over so it's a actually a mirror opposite of it which is what I wanted. So these were ready to download and print. This didn't take long at all and I was ready to fix it so I downloaded to the SDL file, loaded into Simplify 3D and here they are on the bed of my FlashForge Dreamer. It's the only printer I had available at the time. It can do this job just fine. I did a real rough 0.3 layer height, 50% fill, and the temperatures were just normal PLA. Um, I'm using some protopasta, kind of clear stuff that I had, and sliced it. It said it would only take 54 minutes, which was perfect, and I sent it to the printer. And once they were done, here it is on the BuildTac Flex plate, which makes it really easy to just pop these guys off, just flex it, and off they come. And they're not a perfect print by any means, but they look like they'll work. So if you look closely here, everything, including the, the recess for the screw, everything looks good enough. Now I just need to compare this to the old one to see if it's going to work. That's the biggest thing. Did I get my dimensions right? So here they are side by side, and this looks perfect. The holes look lined up. 
and they are because the screws went straight in used my screwdriver to tighten them both and then I just had to put one on the other side and on this side I only put one screw because I'm going to pivot this guy so I can put it actually on the uh, brackets that are on the seat so I just pivoted it in place and got it lined up and then shot the second screw and this thing was fixed I, this was so awesome and while you know while this thing was printing I got the pack and get everything ready so I'm happy with the way it turned out now I may go back and reprint these in a white so it matches better but this clear from protopasta worked well I got it done in time and now I'm headed to the New York Maker Fair stop by tomorrow to see me CNC booth see the big 3d printing part daddy and say hi I'll be there with Joel telling 3d printing nerd and the whole see me CNC crew probably a few other youtubers as well if you like what I'm doing here check out some of these videos popping up if you want to help support the channel a dollar a month to patreon nothing else click on that chep logo and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow at New York Maker Fair.